Who would have thought that Revolution would be so smart and savvy? On November 6, China launched the world's first 6G satellite. That's 6G, people. However, new technology is also bringing new problems to privacy concerned consumers. Data tracking and privacy breaches are a bigger problem more than ever. I do whatever I can to make sure my information stays private online. That means always using a VPN. I personally use Virtual Shield. Keeping Virtual Shield on ensures that I can hide my location online, prevent advertisers from building profiles on me, and allows me to surf the web anonymously. Try Virtual Shield for yourself for free for 30 days and experience true online protection. You also can get 50% off for life if you try Virtual Shield during their limited time holiday season special. That lets you save up to 50% for life. So what do you have to lose? Click the link in my description below so you can try Virtual Shield for yourself today. Muchachos y muchachas. Hey, a lot has been going on today. So much so that I started recording this at midnight because of everything that I'm learning, trying to learn, fast tracking. Uh, it's just a lot. So I'll take you through the transcendence of events as I have learned them today. First, I got sent this by a friend. As you guys know, since the inauguration on the 20th, there have been a lot more assessments. We are starting to learn more as more time passes and days go by. Now, what I got sent, we believe is a close reference to what happened a couple years ago. So if you're familiar with the matter, at President Bush's funeral, there was an envelope situation going on where guests of the funeral would receive an envelope, they would open it up, and some if not most, had a reaction that was questionable. So now, fast forward to Inauguration Day, we now see stills of the inauguration, and this becomes questionable. And why this becomes questionable is because there was already suspicions out there about Inauguration Day. The energy was just very somber. It wasn't very exciting or anything like that. Everybody just seemed so I disturbed, Some something to that matter. And now that we see these envelopes, it's a bit of a puzzle piece. And then along with the weird observations with the White House and DC going black in certain instances and in time spaces, more questionable things are happening. For instance, this was pointed out by a friend of the channel, Joaquin Flores. Why is Kamala swearing in the treasury outside? Some questions posed by Joaquin. Why is this outside? Is it because the Capitol is closed or because the Senate is not in session? But isn't Harris swearing in one of the treasurers a function in her capacity as president of the Senate? Why is this so weird? Onward as if that wasn't already exciting, it was then reported that Down Detector was detailing all of the trading platforms, the apps, the major ones were down. Something was going on. And then a curiosity, GameStop's name was floating around the internet again. Now, if you're like me, we haven't heard of GameStop since maybe the early thousands. And then as I looked into it further and further and started to understand and truly ingest what was happening before our eyes, 
there was a Robin Hood act that was being done on the market. Here's a great set of posts to understand what exactly transpired. This is from Camster999. A bunch of hedge funds made huge bets that Game stock would drop and basically bankrupt. They borrowed stock and sold it, hoping to buy it back later at a lower price. So many people did it that they borrowed and sold the equivalent of about 125% of all the shares. A bunch of individual investors on a Reddit forum, Wall Street Bets, thought they could work together and drive up the stock price. That would force the hedge funds to buy back their shares as their losses increased. So they used the hedge fund against themselves. As the internet guys pushed up the stock a little, hedge funds started buying back the shares to return the borrowed shares they sold off earlier. There were not enough shares though, so the demand was higher than supply, squeezing the shorts and driving up the stock. As the initial short sellers covered their positions and got out, the more short sellers saw the price increase and realized the stock was overvalued, so they shorted the stock too. Then the buyers hit the stock again and squeezed the new short sellers, driving it up more. At this point, people are figuring out that there is money to be made buying GameStop in this short squeeze and a frenzy ensues. So it became a war between short sellers and buyers. This began as a meme on Reddit, but nearly bankrupted some Wall Street hedge funds, including Melvin Capital, which needed $2.5 billion in bailouts from friends. Everyone is crediting Reddit for this, but the amount of money needed to squeeze a hedge fund was high. So I know that that's a lot. And believe me, that's why I'm starting to film at midnight today, because I wanted to truly understand what was going on. But it is so revolutionary. Believe me, you're going to want to understand this. Here is a snippet from Tucker Carlson with a bit of an explanation. Really big and significant story. This is not a financial show, though. We're not fluent really in this stuff. Charles Payne is... He's hosted Making Money with Charles Payne on Fox Business. And so we're grateful to have him on tonight to explain what is going on and what it means. Charles, thanks for coming on. Hey, Tucker, you hit a whole lot of it, but let me just fill it in a little bit more because not only are these folks, uh, these uh, these hedge funds a lot selling these the stock, they don't own the stock, so they borrow it. Imagine you borrow a stock that's trading at $10, and then you drive the share price down, and then you buy it back for a dollar. You make the difference, nine bucks. And, and to your point, they're allowed to short so much stock. Do you know the amount of stock that was out on GameStop? Let's just say 100% of the shares that are out. Well, they shorted 140% of the stock. So, so they borrowed the same stock over and over and over the same shares and sold it into the market over. Their, their job, their mission was to drive GameStop to zero. Zero. No one said a word on any financial network, particularly CNBC, which always lets the shorts come on and a sale. Go, go to war with companies, almost voiceless companies. So what happens? Some people get wind of this. Uh, these folks that you said, uh, these, ind these individual investors, they decide to buy the stock up. They start to pressure the shorts. It's called a short squeeze. And it's working. And Wall Street is losing its mind. And Wall Street now wants to change the rules of the game because a bunch of people with accounts ranging from $500 to $2,500 are taking down the billionaires. And I will say that this has become a very comical piece of our weird little thing we call our pop culture. Who would have thought that revolution would be so smart and savvy? Hello guys, obviously it is editing me and I wanted to actually see how this transcended and maybe see if I could just fit it in here and glad I did. So ever since this morning, this is what has happened since the whole GameStop gate thing that's happening. Okay, so this morning when the market opened at 9.30 Eastern time, the trading companies actually what it seems simultaneously but they all banned buying new shares of amc uh gamestop was obviously already sort of being uh, shadow banned but they forbid that purchase as well as nokia and some other peppered companies in their band so many users they were reporting that they couldn't buy the shares in fact, some users even reported, even some that are my personal follow from my personal following were reporting that some of their orders, their their 
orders were getting canceled and without their permission. And the reason given was that the market was too volatile. So uh, they were they were too concerned with your money. No, 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 don't tra trade your money. So this obviously looks a little funny that these big trading companies would all at once just ban regular Americans, the regular Joes and Schmoes from buying any sort of shares. Well, the panic must have been real because eventually it was reported that some users were even getting their shares sold without their permission. This email being evident of some of that activity. So something curious actually about one of the main stars of this drama is AMC. So in an article that was published back in April of 2020, this is back at the seed of the pandemic when businesses were starting to tank, especially the entertainment industry, they were taking a hit. And so this article here is evident that there was some sort of volatility with the business of AMC. Coming from The Hollywood Reporter, even the headline should make you side-eye this entire thing. Will China's Wanda Group bail out AMC theaters? Interesting. So this article overviews the speculation of the Wanda Group possibly bailing out the AMC theaters back in that day because they were on the verge of bankruptcy. But the biggest piece of evidence here is that AMC is owned by a Chinese company. I'll get to why that's important. The conglomerate AMC's largest shareholder issued a statement in Beijing dismissing talk of the theater chain's possible bankruptcy as a pure rumor, sparking questions about whether it could step in to execute a rescue. The emerging narrative on Wall Street about AMC Theaters, North America's largest cinema circuit, is that the company may be on the brink of bankruptcy amid the coronavirus pandemic. The theater chain's hefty debt load is trading at highly distressed levels, and analysts have sounded the alarm that AMC has minimal liquidity options to make it through the virus crisis, recommending investors to sell off stock before the exhibition giant files for Chapter 11 protection. One especially interested party, however, has expressed disdain for that estimation. Dalian Wanda Group, the Chinese conglomerate that has been AMC's largest shareholder since a historic 2.6 billion cross-border buyout in 2012. So this evidence is their biggest shareholding in AMC Group being a Chinese company. Now this is not to accuse or malign this group, the Wanda Group, with anything I'm about to say or show you, but I just find the timing context all very interesting. So then, I take you guys to a recent amendment that Donald Trump made right as he exited office and here it's just very clearly spelled out. This was a an executive order addressing the threat from securities investments that finance communist Chinese military companies. Let me just read this little part. I, DJT, President of the United States of America, find that the People's Republic of China PRC is increasingly exploiting United States capital to resource and enable the development and modernization of its military intelligence and other security apparatuses, which continues to allow the PRC to directly threaten the United States homeland and United States forces overseas, including by developing and deploying weapons of mass destruction advanced conventional weapons and malicious cyber enabled actions against the United States and its people. Key to development of PRC's military intelligence and other security apparatuses is the country's large ostensibly private economy. Through the national security military civil fusion, the PRC increases the size of the country's military industrial complex by compelling civilian Chinese companies to support its military and intelligence activities. Those companies, though remaining ostensibly private and civilian, directly support the PRC's military, intelligence, and security apparatuses and aid in their development and modernization. What that is spelling out is, I don't care what the company looks like, I don't care what the company seems like, 
if they are funding and economizing the Chinese military apparatus, th then this is what's counting in this executive order. Continued, at the same time, those companies raise capital by selling securities to United States investors that trade on public exchanges both here and abroad, lobbying United States index providers and funds to include these securities in market offerings and engaging in other acts to ensure access to United States capital in that way. The PRC exploits United States and investors to finance development and modernization of its military. So recently, with all of this activity going towards AMC, they were actually able to pay off all their debts and create more shares to sell, regardless of whatever outcome this may provide. Hedge fund billionaires are hemorrhaging money right now. I think as it stands, they lost approximately around $70 billion since this big revolt. So. It's ongoing, it continues, and I know that there are people definitely eyeing the market to see how they can stick it to the big man. And I mean, this sort of thing is incredible how the internet can really mobilize a group of people to act against an entire market. It's not David and Goliath anymore, it's like Goliath and Goliath. One more piece of news before I go, just to top everything off, I saw this and I thought that this was very, very noteworthy and definitely something that you should know about. So apparently in DC, they are beefing security up a lot more. Does it make sense? Because inauguration day, they thought that that was gonna be the most volatile day and there was not one threat. So where these threats are coming from, I have no idea, but we'll take you there. So this is coming from Breaking 911. DC will beef up security even more due to potentially volatile events upcoming, Mayor says. Again, I'm not quite sure what this is, but let's continue. DC Democrat Mayor Muriel Bowser said Thursday that the nation's capital would require even more ramped up security measures. The announcement comes as the White House and the United States Capitol have already been fenced off following the January 6th. I'm not gonna say that because it wasn't a riot. The January 6th protest. So National Guard troops also remain in the area. Based on our conversations with federal partners, there are still some potentially volatile events upcoming that will require extra security. Fencing and the presence of troops will be part of that, but we will not ex accept extra troops for permanent fencing as a long-term fixture in the district. But then this is where it gets confusing. She then proceeds to say that, you know, this will be taken down eventually, and then just yesterday, she was promoting that businesses are open and to take down the plywood. So I can't explain it. I'm just, I see something, I say something. And then there's this. Capitol Police Chief Yugananda Pittman is calling for permanent fencing around the Capitol. I can't explain it. This is very strange, but there you go. What are your thoughts on this whole GameStop AMC thing with the market? What are your predictions? We'll just have to wait and see. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for all of your love and support. Be sure to like and subscribe if you have not already. And hey, if you think that this type of work and commentary is important, please consider going to nataliedenise.com slash donate. Or there are other links in my description below in which where you can help as well. I'm just one person who will give you the media and topics that the mainstream will not. Your support is felt and loved. I will talk to you guys in the next video.